You will be able to draw this from the walls to the windows and doors, all the fills and floors, and the objects, all step by step. We'll even use some of the new hidden ARCHICAD 27 tools along the way. We'll start off with a new project, selecting the generic template, and we'll go new. To make sure that we've got the same interface, we'll go up to Options, Work Environment, then click Work Environment. We'll go to Work Environment Profiles, and double click Architectural Basic Profile 27. We'll go Apply, and then click OK. This way, we're all looking at the same thing. On this left-hand side, you'll find the wall tool. We'll click it, and then within our empty space, to draw our first wall, we'll click once. And if we stretch it out, we can see our wall is starting to be drawn. If I bring it down, then if I hold in the Shift key, it's going to lock it so it's at 90 degrees down the page. Now, if I hit the Tab key, it's going to let me enter in my first dimension. My first measurement is going to be 5,500, 5.5 meters, and we'll go Enter. And we have our first wall. Let's zoom in by scrolling the middle mouse button until we make it a bit bigger on the screen. This will make it easier to navigate. Now, to draw the rest of my external walls, I'm going to hover my mouse over the edge of this wall, just here, until the little tick icon pops up. That means that it'll lock into that corner of the node and our measurements will be exact. So I'll click this one and I'll follow that same step. To draw my horizontal line, I'll hold in Shift, which is going to lock it at zero degrees. While I've got Shift held in, I'm going to tap Tab just once and we'll type in our second measurement, 7,500. We'll hit Enter to finish the operation and that's our second wall. We'll draw another wall vertical. We'll go 7,000 for this one, another horizontal, 2950. I'll click once again. Now this time, instead of actually having to type in the dimension, I'm going to hold in shift to lock it so it's vertical. And then I'm going to bring my mouse over until it's at this wall just here. Once I see this little pencil icon, this will mean that it'll line up with this wall just over here. Now, if I click my mouse, it's going to finish the operation on that wall over there. I'll finish my last wall here, clicking once and then clicking just over on this left-hand side. And we've got a first structure all drawn up. Now, if your walls do look different to this, if we select over the top of all of our walls, bottom left to top right hand side, using the arrow tool, where it says structure just here, we can change this to a bunch of different kinds of walls. So at the moment, we've got generic wall slash shell selected, which is 250 millimeters thick. On this left hand side here, we can change if the walls are showing with multiple skins or just one basic wall. For the sake of this, we'll go to the basic wall option just here. We'll click on our wall type again, and we'll type in aluminium, this one just here. This is going to change all our walls to be one solid fill. Now to make our lines look nice like this, all we need to do is go down to the bottom and where it says pen set modeling, if we click on this and go up to black and white, this is going to change the colors that our tools are going to be using. Let's select over all our walls again and we're going to change this wall thickness just up here to 200 and press enter. Now, if you can't find this option, move your mouse up to this bar here and then scroll your middle mouse button. And this is going to actually shift it so you can reveal other options available. Let's scroll that back and get kicked off with our internal walls. So if I click wall again, it's going to have the wall set up that we had before, but as a shortcut, if I hold in the Alt key on Windows or Option on Mac, this little eyedropper will pop up. So now if I hover over the top of the wall, you'll see it fills that little eyedropper up. And if I click, I'm going to absorb the attributes from that wall. Now make sure you are selecting the actual wall by hovering over the edge of the wall. After we've got that selected and the attributes absorbed, we'll click on this edge just here. And we'll drag it down all the way We'll hold in shift and we'll click again once we get to this bottom edge here. This will finish the operation and we've got our first internal wall. Now it's not lined up there at the moment. So I'm going to click the wall and I'm going to flip it around using this just here. So if I click once, it'll flip it back into the inside. Now internal walls are typically more along the lines of 90 to 100 mil. So I'm going to change this one to 90 millimeters. There we go. Now I promise some new ARCHICAD 27 features. So if we go up into options, then go to work environment, then work environment again, just down the list here to where it says more options. If we click here, then head all the way down the page. If it's minimized where it says experimental features, if we expand it and then click on enable distance guides and then go okay. Looks like nothing's happened, but if we now click on our wall, all of a sudden it gives us measurements on the left and the right hand side. And while we've got the wall selected, if we do tap tab, we can now type in the dimensions from the internal wall to the external wall. I'll give an example. So if we type in say 3000, then press enter, it's going to shift that wall all the way across. It's a really quick way of getting a gauge of how big the different rooms are within your project. So I'll undo this one here at the moment. Next up, we're going to partition out some of the remaining rooms. So let's use the eyedropper tool to select our wall. Before we do get too much further, I'd like to show you these shortcuts here. They make us so much quicker and more effective when we're using ARCHICAD. So I recommend taking a screenshot or writing them down as we'll be using them throughout the entire process. Now I was halfway through drawing a wall. So I'll click this wall here, hold in shift until we click to this edge here. I'll press escape to get out of my tool and then I'll click my wall once more. 
Let's say I want this as the bathroom. I'm going to hit tab, then hit tab again to get to that other dimension, then type in 1950 and enter. I want to duplicate this wall again and partition out for a little toilet just next to it. So hitting Control D using the shortcuts we were using just before will allow us to drag this wall. So if I click on this top edge of the wall now, it's allowing me to drag this wall. And if I tap Control once or Option on a Mac, you'll see a little plus button just below the mouse cursor. This means we're duplicating this wall. So for this one, I'm going to type in 1390. So that's 1.3 meters plus the 90 mil for the wall. I'm going to tap in Enter. I want some robes as well as some storage space just on this left hand side next to the bedroom. So I'll select this wall, tap control, holding in shift, and then clicking tab once, I'll type in 600 and go enter. Let's zoom in just so it's a bit bigger on our page, using the middle mouse scroll to zoom in. And now I'm going to refine these partitions. So I'm going to drag this wall here. I'm selecting this top left hand node, which will allow me to stretch this wall. I stretch this out, oh, the pet pallet's in the way. So I'm going to grab this side edge here and pull it down out of the way. And then I'll hold in shift and I'll click just on this edge here. I'll do the same for this wall just here. I'm going to eyedropper and select this wall here and select from top down to bottom. I'll bring this one over to this wall here just so it's flush with the wall. And then I'm going to go control D and drag this one out one meter, which is a typical width for a corridor. I'm going to hold in the control key or option on a Mac which is going to bring up these scissors and it's going to allow me to chop this part of the wall. So if I click once, it'll cut that wall out completely. Next up, I'm going to grab this wall just here. I'm going to tap control once, which is going to allow me to create a duplicate again. And I'm going to bring this up one meter and 90 millimeters, which is going to be again, common width of a hallway plus the 90 mil stud and enter. I'm going to delete this wall just here. And we've pretty much got all our rooms partitioned out. So next up, we'll want to get access to each of these different rooms. To do this, let's use the door tool. This one just over here. We'll click once. And if we hover over the top of a wall, you'll notice that the opening is showing on that wall. If we push it to one edge, it'll show a little sun just on one side. And likewise, if we pull it to the other edge, it'll show the sun on that side. For the sake of this example, let's always make sure that the sun is facing out towards the outside. We'll click once and we've placed a door. Now it's giving us some options when we move our mouse around, which way we want the door action to face. Because we're pushing this door to the outside, let's just click it to the left for the time being, and we've finished our first door. Now, the cool thing is we can edit this after we've placed it in. So if we press escape, which will bring us back to the arrow tool, and then we select this door here. I can change the size up here. So let's say I want an 820 door, and I press enter. It's going to adjust the door size after I've already placed it in. Now, just like we did for the walls before, if we use the eyedropper and select the door just on the bottom edge corner of each of its nodes, just here, I can now absorb its attributes, and I can place it on other walls. So let's say I want access to this bathroom just down the bottom right here. If I line it up with the wall, click once, and then pull it to the left-hand side and click one more time, I've got my second door all finished up. Let's put in a few more doors, one for the entry just up top here. Now, if you wanna change where you're actually placing the door from, from the left or the right, just up here in the anchor points, we can change that. So if I select this middle one just here, and all of a sudden I can place in the door based on the middle position where my mouse is. So if I click once, then click again, we've got our front entry door done. Let's do a couple more, one more, one door just here, a door just here for the robe. I'll put one just here for the WC, and that should pretty much have a set. I'm going to hit escape to exit out of the tool, and I'm gonna change the parameter of a couple of these doors. I actually wanna turn this into a double door. And now going up to the top left-hand side just here, I can go to the door settings and I can adjust the parameters of the door. This top left hand side, I'm going to search for double door. This will search through the ARCHICAD libraries. And if I scroll to the top, here we are, double door 27. This is the one I'm looking for. I'll click this one and then I'll go, okay. Hey, now we've got the double door in our wall, but we need to change its position. So I'm going to tap control D while the door is selected. This is going to allow me to drag the door up through the wall. I'm going to place this one relatively central just here. And I'm going to change the size so it's just a little bit bigger to say a 1640. Next up, I'll take this door here. I think it's obscuring the entryway. So I'm going to change this one's parameters as well. I'll go up to the top and type in fold because I want a folding door. I'm going to select this one just here. Now when I click okay, it's gonna be way too big. So I'm going to type in the dimensions. For this one, I'll go 900. Now I want the doors to fold the other way. So what I can do, I'm going to tap the shortcut, control M. Now nothing's happened, but if I click once in the middle of the door, it's going to flip it around. So that shortcut, Control M, is mirror. So that will mirror an element that you've selected. Next up, let's show some fill so we can delineate the different spaces from the bathrooms to the living spaces. To do this, let's go to the left-hand side, all the way down the bottom, just underneath document. If we open this one up, we scroll down, we'll find where it says fill. Click fill once, 
And just up in the settings here, we'll see a setting saying fill type. If we select on this one just here, we'll have a bunch of different fills we can choose from. Let's type in wood and we'll go to wood plank horizontal 10. For the geometry method just up here, we'll go to polygonal, this one just here. Now, if we select in this bottom left hand corner up to the top right, we're going to start drawing in our fill. I'll just do this section here, just so you can see what I mean. Because once I close up the selection, just back to here, it's going to fill that entire area up with the fill that we selected. For another quick little example, if I click outside a couple of times here, then reconnect it, we can create all sorts of different shapes with the fills really quickly and pretty easy. Next up, let's do our bathroom fills. To do this, we'll go to the fill. Now, instead of cut fill, like we had before, we'll select to cover fill. Within this one here, if we go grid at the very top, if we click in here and type in G-R-I-D and we select the 30 by 30, this one just here, we can start drawing in our grid just through here. And I'll finish the rest of this and last one and we're done. There we go. And we've got our tiles finished up. Now, if we want these to be a little bit lighter so they don't take as much attention away from the drawing, just here where it says fill pen, if we click this one just here, we can set it to a lighter pen. Now within the pens, you've got the color itself, but each of these also corresponds to a weight, which is how thick the pen is. But we don't need to worry about it too much in this basic tutorial. So for this one, let's select this lighter gray. And now those lines are a little less dominant on the drawings. Very nice, much better. Let's edit a few elements. I'll snip off this wall just here. I'll edit this fill that we just had before. So I can create nodes using the pet palette just here. This one that pops up, but I can change the pet palette by tapping F and it cycles through the different tools until I get to this one here, which is offset edge. So I can bring this one out over till just here. And then I'll do the same thing for this fill. I'll bring this one all the way out to over here and just up to this edge here. This way we can have all this as wet area. I'll also cut out this area here. I'll hold in the eyedrop tool, select the fill again while the fill is selected. I'll click this portion just inside of the fill. And instead of polygonal, I'll go to square and I'll cut this one out just here. There we go. To illustrate this as if it was a kitchen, I'm gonna bring this back 600 and that's gonna represent a bench down through here, which we're going to fill in with some objects. So next up, the tool we wanna to use is the object tool, this one just here. Going up into our settings or using the control, control T, we can open up our settings. Within here, we want to type in sync and we'll go to the sync general 27. I put in this little tap just here and we'll go, okay, place this one just in here. There we go. And we've got a sync, but we need to reorientate it. So what I'll do, I'll escape out of the tool. I'll select the sync, hit the shortcut control E, which is going to allow me to rotate this. I'll select the middle, then I'll hold in shift and then click once more. So I've selected the two points and now I can rotate those points, which I'm going to rotate down like this. So I've just rotated my kitchen sink across and I'll shift it up there. Move this one up a little bit further actually. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, control D to drag, then I'll tap control until the little plus icon pops up, hold and shift and I'll click once and that's going to create another second sink. But what I'm going to do with the sink is I'm going to go to the settings, control T, then I'm going to type in cook for cooked up and I'm going to click this one just here and I'll go, okay, there we go. And now we've got our cooked up. I'll do the same thing, control D, press control and hold in shift to bring this one down through here. After that, I'll go back to the settings, type in toilet or 27 and we'll go, okay. And we've got our toilet. I'll select this one. I'll make sure it's brought all the way up to the wall, holding in shift and then lining it up until that tick hits and then we're good. Tab and then hit tab again. Now tap in say 450, which is a typical minimum dimension. Next up, let's do our vanity again, control. Bring this one down. I'll go to our settings just here. I'll type in vanity, vanity basin 27. We'll go okay. And now we we'll wanna rotate this one. Control E, select this bottom, select the top, then rotate it down and then click again. We'll go control D to bring this one up just till we hit here. Now I wanna change this so it's a square ball. So I'll go control T to jump back into the settings and I'll hit across from here. I'll go from ellipse to rectangular and we'll go, okay. For the dimension, I'm going to type in 1200 and hit enter, control D and I'll shift this one just so it's in line with the wall. All right. Now the cool thing in ARCHICAD, if I hit F3 right now, this will take us into the 3D window. So we can see that everything that we're drawing, not only does it in the 2D, but also in the 3D at the same time except for the fills and any other 2D elements, say like lines or polylines. So if we wanted to create a concrete slab for the structure, let's go back into our 2D. Just on this left-hand side, I'll hit the slab tool. Now to draw the slab all the way around, there's a couple of different methods, but 
The quickest way we can do this is if we hold in spacebar, you'll see a little magic wand pop up. If I hold this to the edge of the structure, you'll see that around the outside of the entire building, all gets highlighted. And if I press once, it's going to fill in this entire space. So let's go to our 3D and all of a sudden we've got a floor, all with just a click. So let's go back to our 2D and finish up the rest of our objects. Let's go back to our object, object again. Now, instead of searching, if we click this icon just over here, we can search through all the libraries individually. We've got cabinets, benches, shelves, and everything else. So if I want a nightstand, I could go to cabinets and shelves, maybe even this one just here, and we'll go, okay. We'll click and we'll put one down here too. All right, so I've just added in a few more objects, say the washing machine, a tub, TV, all things that you can find in the objects. I'd also like to change this door just here into a sliding door, which is this one just here. We'll go, okay. We'll make it a bit bigger to say 2,400 millimeters. I'll grab this tile fill, bottom left, up to the top right. And one of the last tools that we need to cover is the window tool. So just like the door tool, once selected, if we go control T, we can select what kind of window we're going to use. So if we type in sliding, I'll go this one just here, two sash sliding, and then I go, okay. I'll put this into the wall and drag it down. We've now got ourselves a window. If we want to take off the dimensions so they're not distracting from the plans. So what I can do, holding in shift, I can select this door. And then while shift is still selected, I can select the other doors as well. And this one just here. And if I go to the door settings, go into the settings dialog and go tags and labeling, I can turn on and off with dimensions. Then I can go, okay, hey, that looks a bit better there already. And same thing for this one just here. But instead of tags and labels, it'll be the window dimension marker just down here. And I'll go no marker and go, okay. 